Oh, hey everyone. Today I'm going to do a video subject, which I should have done a while ago. But that is to talk about authentic and counterfeit ICs. You know, China is good at counterfeiting things. They counterfeit everything from clothes and handbags to uh, other tools and other products down to electronics, capacitors, ICs, transistors. You know, they just do it to make a quick buck. They undercut the other guy so it looks like it's a good deal. You're buying a, a, a product that's inexpensive. You got a lot less. You think you're doing good, but you're actually getting a pile of rubbish. So what I have here on my little platform is two TDA-2050 ICs. The TDA-2050 was actually discontinued four years ago by ST Microelectronics and even before that time you could still buy the counterfeit ones on eBay. So what I did is purchase some on eBay recently and just to see what I'm getting. I've been doing this for quite a while just to see what I get and I have never received an authentic chip from eBay. So let's take a quick look at the physical differences here. One thing you see in this black square epoxy area, on each side you see these little semicircle scoops in the side. Notice they are in different places. This I see is the authentic one I bought years ago from either DigiKey or Mauser. The scoops are kind of lower in position. They're a little bit down from the center point. Notice these are right at the center point or very slightly above. The second feature I noticed that is different. Look at the legs where they enter the IC package. Notice the difference in the thickness. These are a lot fatter on the authentic chip and they just use a thinner one on the uh, counterfeit part. Another thing, I'm not sure if it shows up on camera, there's a little circular indentation right here at the central lower part on the epoxy square area and there is none on the counterfeit part. As far as that, you really can't go by the the lettering, you know, this can change. Sometimes the quality is better, sometimes it's worse. So you really can't tell just by looking at the lettering that's uh, generally laser etched on these chips. Here's the back side of the ICs. Notice how the epoxy clamps around the metal part to hold it on. It's a little bit different, well quite a bit different with the counterfeit part. I wonder if this metal is copper. If you take sandpaper to the authentic chip, you can see that it's copper. So let me check and see what they're using here. I'm not sure how it shows up on camera, but I took some sandpaper across the top edge of this metal tab. And that is a lovely pinkish shade of fresh copper. So yeah, they are actually using copper there, which is good for good thermal conductivity. Here is a picture of some ICs with the epoxy removed. And after this I will put in a still photo so you can hit pause and look at it closely. But these are TDA 2040 ICs. One is authentic and one is counterfeit. Now I've heard people say that they use reject dyes and things like that. Well, they could in some cases, but I've never found that to be the case. I've always found that they use a smaller die. You see this fake part here. Notice the die size difference. The output transistor area here, and there's some crap on it because I popped the chip and it burned the uh, epoxy and left a mark there. But these are the output transistors, and you can see that they are much larger than the ones here on this counterfeit chip. This chip 
kind of cracked on the edge here but you can still see the outline and I was measuring the area of these die using a micrometer getting the best measurement I could the authentic TDA 2040 had a die area of 8.3 square millimeters and the fake one had only 3.9 square millimeters less than half the area you might say well aren't they trying to make things smaller well that works with computer gates that switch very very small amounts of current in fact they're almost just switching voltages but there's capacitance and during switching and all that I'm not going to get into that but these are power semiconductors and the transistor areas need to be the size they are and able to dissipate the power see these these here these smaller ones are the driver transistors and these are the output transistors and over here I don't know if you can even see the drivers oh this one broke off when I was taking off the the epoxy but the the transistors here are a much smaller area Okay, now I'm going to do a power test. I've squished down the leads to make them flat. This one I already had, this uh, authentic one. I wouldn't do that with one I'm going to actually use in the circuit because you want the bend in the LEDs because it helps with the sort of like a spring action because, you know, they're mounted to a heat sink and there's, they're going to heat up and cool down. So they need that little bend to, to deal with some of that movement. You know, after a while, it could actually bust the solder joints on the board. But anyway, here is the socket board I'm going to plug them into. I have an LM1875 in there now. And I'll do a power test and a short circuit test. Maybe look at distortion. You know, they're feedback amps, so they might be okay with distortion, even the fake part. But we'll see what happens here. Okay, I have the TDA 2050 mounted onto the socket board. And I'm going to use this power supply here to power the thing up. Inside is a 25.2 volt 2 amp transformer with the center tapped, full wave rectified and filtered. And these are the non-inductive 4 ohm load resistors. It's actually 2.8 in parallel for 4 ohms. And if you watched my last video where I was testing the TDA 2050, I actually melted my scope probe because of the heat. It doesn't clip on very good, so I have to be careful there. And we will get some measurements. So I'll turn on the output. I have it preset already. So we're getting about 8.93. And turn this, oops. Turn that off and this is my usual fundamental 1% pilot signal notice we're getting a third harmonic in the last video when I tested the 2050 it was perfect that's because I was using these boards because of the connection losses and other issues with routing the grounds and stuff on these socket boards I'm not going to get perfectly low distortion, so that's why you're seeing that. That's not a fault of the chip. Distortion is excellent when you use the right board. I'm not going to use the board here because I don't want to waste one of my boards just for this test. But at any rate, okay, so we're getting 8.93 volts RMS, so we square that divided by 4. So we're essentially getting 20 watts of clean output from the authentic TDA 2050 when using this power supply. Now I will short circuit the output to see what happens. So 
I had it there for a couple seconds and it didn't hurt it at all. It comes right back. All right, I will stop this and put in the counterfeit part. Okay, I've now mounted the counterfeit part, or at least the one I suspect of being counterfeit, and I will power it up. And it came on. And it's making output. But it's not making as much output, so I have to turn it down. Okay. Not making nearly as much. It's making 7.31. So let me put the camera there seven point three one squared divided by forum load look at that folks that's what happens you get a lot less output thirteen point three five versus twenty watts and something else I noticed uh, let me turn off this. Okay, there's clipping. That harmonic is smaller, but it's probably because there's less current flowing. It's not making nearly as much output. And it's clipping. There seems to be... I didn't notice that before, but... There's little other harmonic blips I'm seeing. I'll have to review the other one and see if that's true or not with the other chip. Okay. Now I'm going to short circuit the output. And I'm going to point it at the chip itself just in case something interesting happens. Sometimes these chips have protection, sometimes they don't. Oh, it died. This is what we're getting now. It killed the chip. It's doing some weird, wacky stuff. Let's turn that down. Oh, it turned it into an oscillator. I turned the signal off and it's oscillating. That's interesting. Uh, let's see here. So that's some crazy frequency. 250 some mega or uh, kilohertz. Oh, we've po Ooh, it's putting off smell. Cut power. Yeah, I can smell a little bit of burnt smell. No short circuit protection on this chip. Piece of shit. Well, I guess that pretty much tells you how good these counterfeit parts are. Could you use this in a circuit? Yeah, you could. But why would you want to? Why hurt other companies? I mean, this example, the TDA 2050 is obsolete, the authentic ones. But when you buy counterfeit parts, you're hurting the company that makes the real part. They cannot make the profits they intended. They might have to make that part obsolete when it still has use to some people. I wouldn't recommend you buy counterfeit parts in any way, shape, or form. I buy them just to play with them and see what happens. I do not use them in my actual circuits. If I build an amp, I'm going to buy genuine parts. I'm pretty much guaranteed to have a good performing piece of equipment. Well, that pretty much sums this up. Thanks for watching.